now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited. Isis, all that glitters. The goddess next door takes on a bikini-clad bank robber in this action-packed all-new Isis series adventure. Get Isis, all that glitters in paperback and Kindle Unlimited today. I have a critical question to ask. How do we get the demon back in the bottle? Now, what is this demon I'm talking about? This demon is all of the crime, violence, looting, and rioting going on all across the country. Now, this crime, violence, looting, and rioting all across the country has exploded over the last six months, and this violence that's gone on has gotten so out of control that it has surpassed COVID-19 as the issue that most people want dealt with in politics overall. Now, this crime and violence had its seeds in left-leaning cities, like here in New York, where they implemented a policy called bail reform, and this policy was supposed to be about getting non-violent offenders a chance to be able to get their lives in order while they were getting their cases processed through the criminal justice system. Unfortunately, many of the alleged offenders didn't go out here to try to get their lives in order as they waited to get their cases through the criminal justice system. Many of these individuals decided to go out here and re-offend again. In fact, one individual boasted about reoffending in the New York Post and said he would reoffend again and again if given the chance. And as we were going out here and having these individuals in New York dealing with this bail reform becoming a complete disaster, we started to see the COVID-19 pandemic arise. And as the COVID-19 pandemic arised and wound up um, taking over, we had left politicians going out here and following the theory by Dr. Fauci talking about closing non-essential businesses. Now, this closing of non-essential businesses led to half the country winding up becoming unemployed, and well, with half the country unemployed, we also had many on the left talking about letting criminals out of jail in order to combat COVID-19. Now, a lot of these states released a lot of the, and cities released a lot of these prisoners from the jails, not understanding the long-term ramifications of it. Short term, they wanted to flatten the curve as related to COVID-19, but long term, they did not understand how they were escalating the crime in many big cities. Now, with this increase in crime we started to see happen in many of the cities, we also saw the murder of George Floyd. Now, the murder of George Floyd was the thing that set off the entire country, and I say even set off the world, because the murder of George Floyd was the thing that set off a lot of the anger and frustration that many Americans had that was building up due to the excessive restrictions of politicians, especially in left-leaning states and left-leaning cities, as related to how people could carry and conduct themselves, like in the state of Michigan, where Gretchen Whitmer was excessively going out here trying to bully the citizens as related to restricting their behavior. What happened was, and the murder of George Floyd, all of that frustration and anger that people had as related to those restrictions then wound up simmering and boiling and then eventually exploding into this rage which led to protest and then eventually led to rioting all across the country. Now, what's really troubling about these George Floyd riots is how they have evolved. Now, these riots originally were supposed to be about getting justice for George Floyd, 
Unfortunately, in this highly politicized environment, we saw these riots evolve into something very, very dark and twisted. And what happened was we started to see these riots turn, become politicized, and instead of them being about justice for George Floyd, they started to become about getting President Donald Trump. And as these riots turned into a campaign to get Donald Trump and covertly show that Donald Trump's mismanagement of the country was the reason for the chaos, we started to see these riots get escalate, especially in left-leaning cities. And we started to see these cities start to lose control. Now, the cities started losing control because the police officers there became demoralized, and these police officers on becoming demoralized decided to pull back as related to fighting crime. Now, here in New York, Bill de Blasio decided to dismantle the anti-crime unit in response to please Black Lives Matter and cut $1 billion from the budget to meet Black Lives Matter's demands to defund the police. And these had a devastating impact on the citizens of New York who were already being attacked in, by criminals, and it practically was one of the things that triggered an exodus of over 300,000 high-earning New Yorkers from New York, and this same violence also triggered the exodus of hundreds of thousands of people from cities like Los Angeles and Portland and Seattle. So those who had money bought homes in other parts of the country or moved to the secondary homes they had in other parts of the country. And these cities have fallen into a state that I have not seen since the days of the late 1970s when I was a little boy. And this chaos that's been going on really has gotten completely out of control. And now that it's just exploded and snowballed into practically carnage almost every day, people are now looking at those on the left and they are asking them, what is your plan to put this demon back in the bottle? Now, the reason why I call it a demon is because only a demon lives to kill, steal, and destroy, because these are the three things that the Most High said that Satan was all about, and that's what we see going on in these cities from many of these alleged protesters and possible plants who are out here to subversively take advantage of these protests, because, again, these protests have gone on for 90 days, and instead of us seeing peaceful protests as related to getting justice for George Floyd and getting justice for black men who have been brutalized by police, race soldiers, and white suburban commandos, we've seen these so-called protests explode into acts of violence and possible acts of terrorism in some cases, because things have escalated so much that they've practically gotten so out of control that not, like we've gotten situations like these so-called CHAZ and CHOP empowerment zone that practically turned into chaos when people in the empowerment zone were committing crimes and led to the murder of two individuals. And we started to also see that with what went on in Portland when Trump supporters came to Portland to go head-to-head -to -head with the Antifas and the far-left Black Lives Matter, and a Black Lives Matter supporter murdered one of the Trump supporters. So all of this is, excuse me, completely out of control, and this is something that many on the far left thought they could, again, in the beginning, covertly used to undermine Donald Trump's re-election, and they thought covertly 
they could use this to discredit Donald Trump and present him as an incompetent president. Unfortunately, what has happened over the last two or three months is these protests have practically gotten so out of control that they don't even have a focus anymore. And as they have got lost their focus on getting justice for George Floyd, we have seen more and more Americans become concerned about what's going on because they see this explosion of crime and violence in their cities and they see people with resources leaving their cities and they see the bigger picture being devastating for them as related to their safety because originally people feared for their safety from COVID-19 but now they're more afraid of these woke far leftists and many of these prisoners who were released from jail and they're really afraid of the unsafe conditions that were created by these policies by these state and local governors where their efforts to allegedly combat COVID-19 has mushroomed into this situation where crime has exploded all across this country and most Americans feel extremely unsafe. So most Americans, when they look at the bigger picture, they're no longer looking at Donald Trump. They're looking at their state and local politicians who, like Lori Lightfoot and the mayor of Portland, who cannot even guarantee their own safety because Lori Lightfoot had literally had to put cops in front of her own home to keep rioters from coming after her. And the mayor of Portland recently had his home torched on his birthday. I mean, this is the type of stuff that has been going on, and it shows us, is there a plan to put the demon back in the bottle? And asking, I'm asking that critical question because many of the leftists covertly let the demon out of the bottle, thinking that they could benefit from its violence, but now this monster is just as out of control as the Me Too monster has remained out of control. That gynocentric Godzilla has been stomping all across the country, and it seems like these monsters that they continue to let out do more damage, and they just are making life horrible for every American out here. And again, the critical question is, how do you plan to contain these monsters? How do you plan to get this country back to being a safe and secure place for all American citizens? Because the quality of life here in America has declined over the last six months, and you really cannot put this all on your Donald Trump. Yes, your Donald Trump was not qualified to be the president of the United States, and he was, again, elected by the American people, but he pales in comparison to what's been going on in many of these cities where we see this chaos going on. I mean, this chaos has gotten so crazy in some cities. People are tearing up stuff that has absolutely nothing to do with George Floyd. I mean, we've had people tearing up statues of Jesus and George Washington and other people who had nothing to do with this cause at all. And this Black Lives Matter and all of these other groups, they have, they have practically gone berserk and there is, and there's nobody there with a concrete plan on how to shut down this violence contain this violence or deal with this violence on a state or local level and there are seems to be no plan to deal with it in any way constructively so that's and the whole thing is why would people want to elect oh, again a left leaning candidate if the politicians in the left leaning cities can't control the violence if the guy on the state and local levels can't deal with the violence, then how can we get the guy on the national level to deal with the violence if elected? That's the critical question 
many people will be asking about Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. How do they plan to contain all of this out-of-control violence, which, again, now we can clearly see has nothing to do with George Floyd, has nothing to do with the issue of punishing race soldiers, rogue police officers, or your white suburban commandos. We don't see any sort of comprehensive plan for punishing these individuals anymore. No, it's just about people participating in mayhem and violence, and this is, runs counter to what the civil rights movement was all about. The civil rights movement was all about civil disobedience, but that disobedience was all in line with the law. So oftentimes, the people in the civil rights movement, while they were participating in civil disobedience, they knew they were going to be arrested. Moreover, many of the people in the civil rights movement, when they went out here to protest, oftentimes vetted individuals before they came out to protest so that these individuals would not tarnish the agenda they were trying to get implemented. Because it seems like your Black Lives Matter and your Antifa, they will allow anybody to become part of their movement, whether it be criminals, pedophiles, or any sort of, any sort of subversive. And these individuals, they wind up undermining the missions uh, that they allege to be a part of, getting justice for George Floyd, and stating that Black Lives Matter. And it, it looks like from the failed leadership of these movements, instead of us being focused on getting justice for George Floyd, we've gotten these riots that have exploded all across these cities and have gone on for practically months on end. Meanwhile, left-leaning candidates just sit there and fiddle as their cities burn. So when I ask this question again, how do you propose to get this demon back in the bottle? That's the question that I really want an answer from, from your left-leaning politicians, because they're the ones whose cities are the ones that are burning. They're the ones whose cities are being looted. And they're the ones who practically have demoralized their police departments and allowed what I see to be urban terrorists to terrorize the citizens of cities like here in New York, Los Angeles, Portland, Seattle, and many other cities. And this demon is running wild just as bad as the Me Too monster that started back in 2017. And these monsters are making the quality of life in America untenable. So we have to really think about who we elect to political office, because if we elect the wrong person to political office, they will give the gynocentric Godzilla and the demon from the bottle a pass. And these, these, these demons, again, they, they came out and... The left wanted to get their wish, which was to undermine Donald Trump. But what has happened is people no longer are looking at Donald Trump as the problem. They're looking at the crime and the violence. So, yes, some on the left got their wish in the short term as related to trying to discredit Donald Trump. But now the big issue is crime, violence, and now it has surpassed COVID-19 as the issue of 2020, because if people don't feel safe, it doesn't matter about the virus getting them. More people are scared of being harmed by either a Pookie, a Ray Ray, or a Black Lives Matter, or an Antifa follower, and this is what has them afraid to go out here, because this this has just gotten so out of control, no one feels safe with these people roaming the streets and roaming the streets with no sense of accountability because we don't have law enforcement to deal with them. Now, I look at this situation, and again, the reason why I asked the left this question is because many of the people participating in the violence are following them, 
and this is just not making their argument for discrediting Donald Trump look strong. I mean, how do you make Donald Trump look weak if you're out here terrorizing citizens? How does that make Donald Trump look weak when you prove many of his points and you further reinforce the argument that that these cities are just out of completely out of control. I mean, I look at this situation and this is this is very troubling to me. And again, how do you get this demon back in the bottle and how do you get America back to being a safe place for residents to go out here and be able to do business and be able to take their children to school? That's the critical question that needs to be asked because if we don't get this demon back in the bottle, America won't be a great place and it won't be a great place for anybody as long as these people are out here participating in chaos. Now, this video is not going to get monetized due to YouTube's terms of service and I need, if you want to see me make more videos like this, I need you to donate to my Cash App or my Patreon by clicking the links in the description box. You can also help out by picking up one of my books on Amazon.com, Smashwords, the iBookstore, or Google Play. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and e-readers, Spinsterella. Discover the dark side of love in this goth and lovely romance with Spinsterella. Get Spinsterella in paperback and e-readers at your favorite online bookseller today.